Today's video is sponsored by myself and my web shop tsmc.shop. Please go check it out. The new website is now live and we're constantly adding new products to get you a better shopping experience and the best possible tools and materials for your hobby needs. Today's workbench footage is partially brought to you by BenQ and their new IdeaCam S1. This is a webcam with a lot of interesting functionality and also some stuff that translates really well into making specific videos about my scale models or otherwise showing very detailed images uh, through a webcam. Now normally I would be filming with my iPhone. In this case, all of the workbench footage will be done with the BenQ S1 Pro. Now the handy thing about this webcam is that it can be mounted to your screen or on a tripod. In my case, I've mounted it to my tripod, which is mounted to my desk where usually my phone would be. So it's the exact same spot that the regular placing would have done as well. Now this one also comes with a small remote control and uh, something to magnify the images even further. So let's say the regular zoom in is not good enough. You can just simply pop this onto the camera itself by a magnet, hold the items very closely to it, and it will get a super sharp and fine image of what you're exactly looking at. You can also still use the zoom in function to get even closer and also tap the focus button to get the super sharp image here required for that specific small area. I will be testing this camera out in a further video as well, but for now, if you guys would like to see me do more with this or are interested in purchasing one for yourself, I will be linking in the description down below. Thank you BenQ for sending this out for me to try on the videos and share it with my audience. Also, I do have an idea to do some live streams uh, of some builds and this would be a really good camera to use for that as I can't use my phone on the live streaming because it needs to do some other stuff at the same time as in filming, etc. So if you guys would be interested in live streams, do let me know and I'll check out what the possibilities are to share it with you guys. So with all of the panel lights now pretty much scribed out, I needed to fix some minor errors in the bodywork. I did not notice these during the unboxing because I'm usually more focused on what is on the screen instead of actually showing the parts to myself properly. There was a small amount of misalignment on some of the molds. Now keep in mind I get these kits for free and I do sometimes get some parts that otherwise would be thrown out so not all of them are always perfect. Now in this case with the misalignment there are some weird artifacts left over in a panel line and some other smaller spots on the front bumper. Now these were pretty easily fixed with some UV resin. This is the resin that usually goes into my 3D printers for printing parts. And now in this case, it is also re really easily usable as a filler. You can just simply put a small drop on the part you need and then cure it pretty much instantly with a UV flashlight. And also in my case, I decided to go a bit further and just put it in my regular curing chamber. With all of those parts now fixed, it was time to sand the rest of the body with a 400 grit before getting it into the spray booth to get it primed with some Mr. Hobby primer using the Gallery Mobius 0.3 airbrush. I've recently added a lot of Mr. Hobby paints to my web shop, the tsmc.shop. And if you're interested in checking those out, I will of course link those in the description down below. It will help out the channel massively. Now, of course, I need to test these paints myself before I'm going to be telling you that they're good and to buy them. So in this case, I'm starting off with the primer and I've also tried some of the other paints in a previous video too, uh, but more on those will come in further projects as I test them even more. So first of all, just using the primer, it is pretty thick straight out of the bottle. So you do need to use the thinners to thin it down a little bit. I didn't really find a super set consistency between the thinners and the primers yet. 
I just keep adding thinners until it is thin enough. I usually go for a thin consistency like milk, just make it drop easily off of the pipette and spray out cleanly through the airbrush, but that is something you might need to figure out yourself as I don't really go for set ratios. I just see what I like and how it sprays out. So first of all, I sprayed a nice light coat of primers just to see if my fixes and repairs were working out good and if they needed a little bit more attention. In this case, they needed a little bit of a touch up with some of the panel lines, a little bit more filler for some small air bubbles and holes here and there, and a little additional sanding. So I sanded at the primer with a 600 grit, then applied another good coat of primer, let that cure. That turned out to be nice and smooth, so I could move on to the body color itself, which I chose to go for Nagaro Blue. Now in this case on the image it's shown on a Golf, but I believe this is the original color used on the Audi RS2 from back in the day. And that is also a car I'm going to be copying, sort of. I'm going to go for the same body color and the same style interior with a black and blue combo and also some exterior touches as well. Now on that car there weren't really any carbon fiber parts on the exterior. Uh, nor really any silver parts, so I'm still a bit contemplating on what to do there. Should I just go for gloss black, gloss carbon, or maybe even matte carbon, or add some silver trim as well? Do let me know down in the comments, and also for the wheels, which wheels would you like to see me use on this build? The first coat of color has now been applied. I let that sit and cure for about 10 minutes and then moved on to the second coat. Now one thing to keep in mind is this is a resin model kit and therefore I can apply the paint a lot heavier than I could on a plastic kit. So if you're replicating my spraying techniques, do not spray this thick this quickly on a plastic kit with these types of paints as it will ruin your models as it simply will just melt and bite into the plastic and leave really ugly finishes. So go slow, that is the way to go. That rhymes, just moving on and ignoring what I just did there, it seems like a good idea. Uh, but don't go too thick too quickly as it will simply ruin the kit. In this case it is resin, the resin material is really hard and resilient to uh, these paints and therefore it can handle it, same as with die cast. But in the case of plastic and lacquer paints those don't really go together that well. So either use a 2K sealer first to seal in the plastic or just build up the layers a lot slower. In this case, I'm using about three coats of paint before it is fully covered, but on a plastic kit, this would either be four or five regularly. You've seen me scribe out the panel lines at the beginning of the build and therefore the panels are really nice and deeply engraved. Now this does cause some problems sometimes with the paint not flowing in it and leaving the uh, plastic or in this case resin exposed. So what I'm doing right here is just going over the panel lines in a couple of different angles making sure that they are all filled in with color and they don't look weird. After doing that, usually uh, with military modelers, they call this pre-shading. I will go over the rest of the body again just to make it flow together and not have lines around the panel lines and just have a smooth coat of paint. After the final coats of color have been applied, I set the body aside for a couple of hours to cure, applied some of the small RS7 and Audi logos on the back, and then applied the clear coat. So first of all, of course, the hard to reach, easy to forget spots, and then the rest of the body with a light coat too.
first mist coat has been applied, I let that sit for about 5 to 10 minutes and then move on to the second coat. This is a bit thicker of an application just to apply a bit more clear and get it a bit more smoother. So I'm just going over the panel lines uh, or panels a bit slower, building up the paint a bit more and getting a better finish. Again, after the second coat of clear had been applied, five to 10 minutes of curing time. And in this case, I added a small amount of thinners extra to the clear coat mixture, just to make it a bit thinner and flow out a little bit better. In the first two coats, we applied a lot of clear with not as many thinners. So that has built up the amount of clear that you want on there. And then in this third coat, it's a bit of a flow coat just to get it smoother and have a nicer finish. So a small amount of extra thinners does help that just to make it flow out a little bit more and get that super nice finish that you're after. Now to be very clear, I do still have a small amount of orange peel, but that is totally acceptable to me and does not require polishing. There are some small dust spots on the roof and the hood as well. Now you could polish those out, sand them out, re-clear it or do whatever you want or just leave them in as most of the time polishing is a ton of work and doesn't always give a smoother and nicer finish, but could leave a lot of scratches and a bit of a duller finish. So it's just what you prefer. In this case, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. Most likely, I'm not gonna polish it and leave it as is, as I do like the off the gun finishes I have most of the time, but we'll just set it aside for a couple of weeks and move on to some other parts, finish some other builds, and then get back to this one at a later stage. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments below what you think, and I'd like to see you guys next time.